Hi there everyone, welcome back to Cody's Lab. So today we're going to be mixing together mercury, the heavy liquid metal, and thallium, the metal whose salts are tasteless, odorless, and incredibly toxic. Mercury is toxic too in salt form. But the idea here is that the alloy will form an eutectic mixture which will melt at a temperature 20 degrees Celsius colder than mercury. Mercury freezes at about negative 40 Celsius. This alloy should freeze at around negative 60. I believe it was once used in low reading mercury thermometers, but really it doesn't have many uses today. In fact, I couldn't find very much information about this alloy on the internet, which is why I'm making it today to explore its properties. So, uh, since we are working with the metallic forms of the elements here, it shouldn't be too much of a problem. We'll just uh, mix them together and see what happens. So here's the thallium. I got this originally from my element collection. It resembles tin, although it does tarnish much more rapidly, especially in moist air, which is why it is currently being held underneath mineral oil. And it, it stayed pretty shiny over the years. So here we go. I've taken it out of the bottle. And as you can see, it is a fairly light colored white metal. I mean, most metals are kind of like this. Seems to most closely resemble tin. Now, back in my uh, Clercy solution video, the video about the clear liquid that's about four grams per cubic centimeter, uh, a lot of people uh, were upset that I didn't show the action of actually cutting this. So here we go. Let's see, cutting the metal. So it is, it is a soft metal, but it's not like cutting sodium or anything. It's about as hard as pure lead. Maybe a little bit softer than pure lead. So I'm just going to cut a few pieces off. I'm shooting for around a gram. It's not easy to cut. I'm having to push pretty hard. Of course this isn't a particularly sharp blade. go. By the way, bonus points if you recognize where this uh, razor blade came from. So there's the gram of thallium in the jar. I'm going to add, uh, add about 10 grams of mercury. So that should bring it up to 11. go. Might have been a little bit much, but since this does form a eutectic alloy, it really doesn't matter because it'll form the right composition as it crystallizes. Let me put the lid on this. We'll see how long it takes to dissolve. You know what? I think that actually dissolved pretty well. That was much faster than I thought it would. Gold, for instance, does not dissolve nearly that fast. It's kind of sticky to the glass though, you see? That's a little annoying. A, the mercury normally doesn't stick to glass, that's why it's so much better than, say, gallium. But, here we go. It dissolved in pretty well. Now to the second jar, I'm just going to add some pure mercury so that we can compare. I'll try to get about the same amount. Roughly uh, 12 grams. All right, close enough. Let's put the lid on everything. Okay, so we have pure mercury on the right and the mercury thallium alloy on the left here. You can see the uh, thallium is oxidizing, kind of as I expected. Thallium is much more reactive than mercury is. And they have about the same density. They're both about the same viscosity and everything. You know what? Let's actually see if I can get a density reading off this. So first let's uh, get uh, mercury. We'll compare it to that. So I'm just going to fill this uh, glass 
tube here with mercury. We're going to weigh it, dump out the mercury, and then we're going to add in the alloy and compare the weights. Looks like surface tension will just hold it in the tube. We'll set it on there. We get 8.163. With the mercury dumped out, it's 1.421. Filled up to the same level with the mercury thallium alloy. Put it back on there. 8.023. So it looks to me like it's a little bit less dense. As you'd expect, because thallium is less dense than mercury. I've gotten out a dwarf flask. I've labeled my vials. And uh, here's some propane. I'm just going to release this as a liquid into the doer and it'll be boiling at negative 42 degrees Celsius. Definitely cold enough to freeze mercury. Okay, not quite as cold as liquid nitrogen but still very cold and very flammable. Pretty sure I've got all sources of ignition extinguished at the moment. So here's our mercury thallium alloy and the mercury. Let's set them down inside the propane. Hopefully the jars don't break. Alright, it's been in there for a couple of minutes now. Pull the mercury out and as you can see, the mercury is frozen solid. There you go. Set that aside for a minute. Let's pull out the thallium alloy. And that is still liquid. Look at that. So it worked. Can't see it all that well because it's developing frost, but there you go, it's liquid. And the mercury is a solid. So adding the thallium did indeed decrease its melting point. <laughs> That's cool. Literally. And see as I warm up the mercury. It is beginning to melt. Yeah, there you go. Let's see if by boiling the propane under vacuum if I'm able to freeze it. So, got the lid just a little bit loose. Lay it down there in the propane. Now let's suck out the air. See, the propane's now boiling at a lower temperature. So I think we might have solidified the metal. I'm currently at just under 10 millimeters of mercury worth of vapor pressure. Let's pull it out of there and see if it's frozen. Let's catch that. It's frozen. See that there? Okay, so we're out of the vacuum chamber. Let's actually add the propane to it and see if we can measure the temperature as it melts. Okay. Let's uh, put in my electric thermometer here. So, just to the point where it's liquid, it was uh, 69 ohms, and we're rapidly increasing temperature now. So here's my thermometer calibration chart. You'll have seen this if you've seen my video on making that thermometer, link in the description. So, I thought it was 69 ohms when it started to melt, and that should be right about there. Let's guess uh, 212 Kelvin. Puts us right there. Yep. I'd say that's on the line. So that confirms a melting point of a negative 60 degrees Celsius. Maybe a little bit off, but yeah, that's, that's close enough for me. There you go. 
Another one to add to my liquid collection. There is one more metal that uh, melts at an even lower temperature. It's a cesium based alloy. And I will make a video on it at some point. But until then, I'll see you next time. I can get about a thousand counts per minute off this, and uh, this is only measuring the gamma and beta radiation. So, how do I extract the thorium in a pure form? Today, that is what I'm testing to see if I can do. Uh, I think what we're doing is just seeing if we can separate the thorium from all of the other stuff that's in the mantle. They've got uh, cerium and, you know, you know, cotton, so I've got to extract the carbon. Carbon is pretty straightforward. I'm just going to burn the thing. You see the thorium mantle produces a really bright light when it's hit with the fire. That's why they're used in uh, lanterns.